Welcome to Library Storytime. Our first story today is It's Impossible. There we have dog and crab. And you can tell dog is just worried. He's not sure it's possible. Whatever it is. I wonder what it is, boys and girls. On the sunniest street in the busiest city, dog ran a neat little laundry service. He whistled as he washed his customers' clothes and hung them on the rooftop to dry. There we go. So he's a busy laundry service. But the city was noisy even at night. At bedtime, Dog turned on his ocean nightlight. It filled his dreams with the softest, gentle wish of the sea. If only he could visit the real ocean, but it was just too far away. You like his bedroom, boys and girls? Look at all those stars and different animals of the ocean lit up at night. Cool. Instead, Dog made little boats and read thrilling ocean tales. Then one day, he discovered a brand new laundry soap. Ocean magic for seaside freshness with every wash. He couldn't wait to try it out. Dog poured in the laundry soap and the clothes began to swirl. Soon the smell of the ocean filled the air. Magical Dog smiled. It felt like he was really there. Then Dog heard something. A crab, he cried. It's impossible, ugh, groaned the crab. I feel sick. Apparently that crab was in the box of ocean magic because I think he's sick from spinning around in the washer. <laughs> That's crazy. How did you get here, crab? Dog asked. Crab shrugged. One minute I was on my beach, then like magic, I was in your laundry basket. After a few minutes, Crab said, it's time to go home. Can I borrow your bike? Of course, agreed Dog, but will your feet reach the pedals? So mail me instead, tried Crab. You'd get squashed, sputtered Dog. Then I'll walk announced Crab, scooting to the door. Wait, it's Miles, gasped Dog. Look, he pointed to a map on the wall and sighed. I've always wanted to go to the ocean, but it's too far to drive. It's impossible. So here's Dog in the city, and he thinks it's too far to drive down to the ocean. I've got it, beamed Crab. Let's drive there together. A road trip. It'll be fun. I'm not sure, began Dog, but he really wanted to see the ocean and help Crab too. Dog listened to Crab's plan. Let's do it, he said finally. So they have their little map out and they've got the compass out, pencil and paper, and they're planning their big trip to the ocean. Early the next day, Dog hopped in the van to deliver his customer's clothes. But when he got back, his suitcase was all packed. Boy, Crab's really anxious to get to the ocean. Dog gasped. It was one thing to say he would go, but quite another to actually do it. It's impossible, he said sadly. I can't leave. I'm sorry. It's only impossible if you say it is, replied Crab. Can't we try? <laughs> so they did. We're off, cheered Dog. This road trip just might be possible after all. And Dog looks happy, doesn't he? 
Oh, I think this is funny. Look at that giraffe. His head out the window. He's looking up on the rooftop. Buildings full of different animals. Look at the owl. He's reading a book. Dog and crab traveled for weeks. They drove through dark caves and crossed giant waterfalls. And every day they added special memories to their map. <laughs> they got a lot of traveling to do. Kind of looks like we went all crooked. Wouldn't it been nice to go straight? I guess they wanted to visit a few things on the way. That's what I would like to do. <clears throat> then one day, they climbed a mountain to the top of the world. Oh, crab, exclaimed Dog. I never knew there was so much to see. They met others on their own journeys, too. I used to be scared of heights, Mouse smiled. But look at me now, right up here. <laughs> and I always got frustrated easily, said Flamingo. But now I can do anything except put up tents on windy mountains. That's impossible. Only if you say it is, chuckled Dog. And together they had the tent up in no time. That night, Dog and Crab were warm and snug as the wind howled around them. By morning, all was calm. But the road to the ocean was blocked. Look what happened, boys and girls. This tree broke off from the wind, laying across the road. Dog and crab had come so far. We can move that tree, can't we, crab? Asked dog. We'll finish our journey, won't we? Now Dog really wants to finish the journey. But Crab knew that this time it really was impossible. Dog, the thing is, he began, when... Vroom, it was Flamingo in her monster truck. Let's get this tree out of here, she called. Soon Dog and Crab were on their way again. Follow that seaside breeze, said Crab. So they did just that. On and on until the ocean, exclaimed Dog. Home, cheered Crab. We did it, Dog. We did it. At last, it was time to explore. Dog flew kites, jumped waves, and built castles in the sand. And the pale blue fish that once flickered from his nightlight now swam around him in all the colors of the rainbow. Look at all those pretty fish. Dog wished he could stay forever, but every vacation has to end. I have to go back, he sighed, to my job and my home. But you love it here, cried Crab. Dog nodded. But to stay is impossible. And then he stopped. It's only impossible if I say it is, gasped Dog. So guess what he did, boys and girls? He created a job right on the beach. On the sunniest beach by the calmest ocean, Dog and Crab now run the most magical cafe. And together, nothing feels impossible. I like that story. Yeah. My daddy always told me that I should never say I can't do it, that you should always try because you never know what you can do if you just try, boys and girls. Just try.
Right. All right, Miss Lisa. All right, uh, boys and girls, if you notice the way her story opened and the way it ended, it used the word sunniest. Now, the word sunny is <clears throat> an adjective. And if we wanted to add ER or EST, we make other adjectives called the comparative and superlative adjectives. And so today we're going to do a little activity with adjectives. So I have three clouds, one that has just the adjective, and then if we're going to compare two, two things, we add ER to make it a comparative adjective. And if we're going to compare one thing to everything, we are adding EST and it's a superlative. So I have some little packets here with some adjectives. This adjective is fast. So inside this little pocket, I have three animals. I have the lion and we have the cheetah and I have an antelope. Now, which one of these three is fast? which one is faster, and which one is the fastest. Now, we're going to have learn a little science here because there's actually numbers that tell us how fast these go. So the lion goes 80 kilometers per hour. That's super, super fast. But when compared to the antelope, this is faster than the lion. And I think most of you know that the cheetah is the fastest land animal. It can go 113 kilometers per hour. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right. My next little pocket is also fast, but these are animals in the ocean. So we have the marlin, the bluefin tuna, and the sailfish. So again, if we look we can find out that the tuna is fast. The marlin is faster at 80 kilometers, same as like the lion, but in the water. And a sailfish is 110 kilometers. That's how fast it can go in the water. That's incredible, don't you think? All right, our next adjective is small. So what are some of the smallest animals on Earth? We have a fairy fly and a feather winged beetle. And I don't even know how to say that word. There's some little tiny bug right there. Oh my <laughs> goodness. A carabia. I don't know about that first word. But if we look at the numbers, and these are teeny, teeny, tiny, this is only one tenth of a millimeter. That fairy fly is very small. But then this guy is smaller, and the beetle, actually, you know what, boys and girls, I did that backwards. This one's going to be the smallest of them all, <laughs> and that one. This one is small. This one is smaller. Nope. This I was right. This one is the smallest of them all. Sometimes numbers below zero get me mixed up. All right, let's take these down and let's do a couple more. What about animals that are strong, boys and girls? I have an ant. Is an ant strong? Or a bee? Or a dung beetle? So if we look at the numbers, this is how much weight they can carry on their backs. So we know that an ant is strong because it can carry 50 times its weight. Um, a bee is strong it can carry 300 times its weight. And a dung beetle, oh my goodness, it carries over a thousand times its weight. That is just incredible. Let's do two more. What about loud? What are some of the loudest animals in the animal kingdom? Well, we have something called the pistol shrimp, the howler monkey, and the blue whale. Now, if we look at these, which one is loud? The howler monkey has 88 decibels. A blue whale is 190, but a pistol shrimp, 200 decibels. Now, I had no idea what this was, boys and girls, so I looked it up. A pistol shrimp has a little claw, and when that claw opens up, it shoots out a bubble that is going to sting the other shrimp that it wants to, st um, to stun, and then it will come and attack it and eat it. But that letting go of that little bubble has a decimal sound of 200. So it's very loud when wow. it pops that bubble out of its claw. 
All right, the last one we're going to do today is deadly. Who, which of these little animals kills the most people in the United States? Mosquitoes or snakes or scorpions? So let's look at our numbers. So scorpions kill about 1,500 people. So it is deadly. Snakes are deadlier at 100,000, but mosquitoes are the deadliest, probably because they carry a disease called malaria and can really kill a lot of people. So we talked about adjectives today, boys and girls. Adjectives are words that we can add ER and EST so that we can compare other things to it. So adjectives are really cool when you use them in your writing. Just like the book that Kim read had sunniest and busiest and calmest and warmest. So that's pretty neat, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. I was really surprised, Miss Lisa, that this howler yeah. monkey wasn't louder than that little shrimp. Right. That's why I had to look that up. It's just crazy <laughs> that its little bubble that pops out has that amount of sound. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, it's very interesting. Wow. Yeah. All right. So Kim read to you guys a book about a dog and a crab that were friends. And so this book is called What Friends Are For. So if, we, if you look at the picture... You have a whole bunch of little animals that look like they're all friends. Let's see ones. What are friends for? Looks like maybe they're helping each other. That's one thing that friends are for. What a glorious day, beamed Badger, as he played happily in the summer sun. I haven't seen a cloud in weeks, Hedgehog called from his sunflower patch. And the baby bunny sang, hooray for summer, as they splashed in their pool. It's a fun thing to do in summer. The next day, the badger was fixing Rabbit's umbrella when Mouse rushed up in a panic. Badger, she cried, come quickly. The stream has run out of water. Run out of water, exclaimed Badger. Let's go and see. Rabbit and Hedgehog were running to the stream, too. Have you heard? They cried frantically. There's no water. Impossible, chirped Bird, swooping down. Who ever heard of such a thing? Hmm, what are they going to do without water? But at the stream, all they found was a teeny tiny trickle, just enough to fill Badger's cup. Maybe there's more in the pond, suggested Bird as she flew off to find out. This won't last long, said Badger. We had better find a way to collect the rest of the water. What do you think stopping up the water? Where'd it go? Back home, Badger quickly built a sturdy barrel. We have an entire pot full of water, the bunnies called as they ran up to Badger. And my teapot is full, <laughs> added Rabbit. But when they poured in everybody's water, the barrel wasn't even half full. That's not going to last long, is it? <laughs> How will I water my flowers, exclaimed Hedgehog. How will we fill our pool, wailed the baby bunnies. How will I do my laundry, squeaked the mouse. Wait a minute, Badger said. If there's no water left, what? Will we drink? As the summer sun's rays grew stronger, the friends fell silent. Maybe Bird will find water, said Hedgehog, hopefully. So why can the bird find water? Well, he can, if he can fly, maybe he can see something that the rest of them don't see. But Bird had terrible news. The pond is dry, she twittered. The frogs have lost their home. That's awful, everyone exclaimed. What can we do? Well, we must share our water with the frogs, replied Badger, being careful not to waste one drop. The friends poured some, of bat some water into Badger's wheelbarrow and headed for the pond. Oh, they're going to share with their frog friends, aren't they? Well, they arrived just in time. Look at the little frogs. <laughs> We're so happy to see you, croaked the frogs. 
Badger picked him up and helped him into the wheelbarrow. Look at this guy over here. Oh, thank you, they riveted, splashing gratefully. Maybe we'll find more upstream, suggested Bird. Good idea, beamed Badger. Let's go check. Let's hope they find more water. But the journey uphill was steep and long and very hot. I can't walk anymore, sighed Hedgehog. We're thirsty, wailed the baby bunnies. We can't give up, said Badger. I bet there's water just ahead. The friends struggled along the path until around the bend, what do you think they're gonna see? They saw, what is it going to be? Water! A cool mountain pool sparkled in the sun. Jump in, yelled the bunnies. I think these boulders have moved, said Badger, and they are stopping the water from flowing downstream. But they're too big for us to move out of the way, chirped the bird. Maybe not, said Badger. I have an idea. How are they going to move these boulders so the water can move downstream? his idea. Do you have any idea? I love the frogs. <laughs> Badger found a branch to use as a lever. He wedged one end under the biggest rock and pushed down hard on the other, but the boulder didn't budge. We'll help, called the rabbits, <laughs> and everyone rushed up. It's no good, twittered Bird. It just won't move. Well, wait for us, said the frogs. And just as the smallest frog leapt onto the lever, the boulder wobbled and started to roll. <laughs> Guess they're all helping, aren't they? Whoosh! Went the water as it flowed downhill. Hooray! Everyone cheered. Soon the stream was flowing again, and finally it started to rain. Your rain barrels worked perfectly, squeaked a mouse as the raindrops dripped down into the barrels. Now we can save water for a rainy day. Hooray, exclaimed the baby bunnies, and everyone cheered. Hooray for our clever friend, Badger. And that's it. So what are friends for? To help each other to out. help each other. Yep, there we go. Great story, Miss Kim. What do you have for us? Oh, I have one more story. We've been talking about impossible things to do, mm -hmm. but they did them. Mm -hmm. They thought that was impossible. Dog thought it was impossible to go to the ocean. And now we have a monkey who says, or a chimp, who says, I didn't do it. <laughs> All right, you have to watch the illustrations, boys and girls. Watch what happens in the illustrations. You can see here we have a rhinoceros carrying a ladder. And here's this little chimp, Milo. Milo loves his new bike. One day he hopes to be a champion racer. Do you see what Milo's doing, boys and girls? He decided to have a banana on the way. And when he did that, he threw down his banana peel. Now, if you've ever seen any funny comical cartoons, sometimes bananas are in those cartoons. And when they throw down a banana peel, uh-oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Ah, oops, he slipped on that banana peel. Today, Milo is in a hurry. The big cycle race is coming to town, and he doesn't want to miss it. He doesn't even realize that something has happened back here behind him. And so, whoosh, off he goes. Oh, look, crash. Rhino dropped the ladder because he fell, and then it crashed into the different food stands. 
He can hear the crowd cheering. And then this guy with the ice cream stands, uh-oh. And Chimp says, I didn't do it. Quick, quick. Oh, dear. The cheering is getting louder and louder as the watermelons go boing, boing, boing on the ground. I didn't do it, said the chimp again. <laughs> no, look what's happening. We The racers are getting closer. Look at this one flying through the air. And this one says, my baby. And Milo says, I didn't do it. Quick, quick. And here they are. I want to see the finish. But Milo wants to see the finish. Look at that. There are all the racers coming through. Crash, bang, whee, boing, bounce. The finish is in sight. I didn't do it. Quick, quick. Ooh, the finish line. Help, help. This woman's still trying to get to her baby that's flying through the air. And look at this, these other bicycle people. Wee, eek, oh, they're falling over. The watermelons are crashing into them. <clears throat> Hooray, hooray, all the people cheer. And here they come, says the rooster. Click, click, they're taking pictures. But who will take the prize? Hmm, interesting. Who do you think, boys and girls? My baby, help! That baby's still flying. Stop him, look, 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 look what he's got. Oh, no, not him. Stop, thief. Catch him, somebody. Oh, look, he stole away that trophy. And here's Milo. And he's looking back, and he has this worried look on his face. Mm -hmm. And somebody catch the baby. Oh, look what Milo did. Gotcha. He stopped the thief. Good. Hope that trophy doesn't break when it falls. And look what he did. Hooray for Milo. He did it. Isn't that interesting how that all worked? Here he picked up the trophy after the thief he knocked the thief down, and then he's going to catch that baby inside that trophy. <laughs> now, that's pretty good. What a mess of a thing happened there, right, boys and girls? He did it! Milo says, I did it! That's pretty funny. That's a funny book. All right. Story. Now, who really did what in this story, boys and girls? Do you know who did what? <laughs> I think Milo is the cause of everything happening, but he doesn't realize it. He really didn't realize it. But he saved the day, didn't he? He did a pretty good job of making everything turn out okay. So kind of a cute, fun little story. Well, that's all we have for you today, boys and girls. We hope you enjoyed the stories. You have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye.